Hello to everyone, good evening or good afternoon, depending where you are, of course. I uh, hope everyone is doing well, and yeah, welcome to another uh, streaming time with uh, Grisa over here. Hey buddy, already hungry, no doubt. And uh, some Commodore 64, of course. Um, just a heads up for those uh, joining me on the YouTubes. Uh, I have no clue why, but uh, if I stream directly to YouTube, the delay is very short. But uh, for some reason, if I do it through Restream, it, uh, yeah, it looks like we're almost like a minute behind now. It's like there is an extra added delay or something, and I have no clue what's causing that. Again, if I stream normally to YouTube, no problem whatsoever. It actually beats out the, the latency from Twitch in that case. Um, but as soon as Restream sends it to YouTube, it uh, it gets delayed by uh, by a fair amount, um, and that is not the case on Twitch. So I I really need to look into that and how to fix that. I was hoping that maybe if I left the latency option um, at standard and not go for ultra fast, it would solve it. But uh, that is certainly not the case uh, because it still looks very very delayed. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, also sorry for my a bit of a gruffy appearance. Uh, I uh, uh, had a couple of days where I had a big, big issue with headaches. Um, and if I have headaches, then I know I should not take a, a shower. So, you know, good thing it's not smell vision I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah. If I have headaches and I go do certain things, then I, I just collapse. Um, and one of those things is taking a shower or uh, traveling. Those are the main uh, the main things that I should really avoid. Um, yesterday I, uh, I did uh, kind of give up in the evening and just decided, you know, let's just give some uh, sleeping medication in there. And at least have a good night's sleep. So, you know, that helped a bit, I think, because today I feel, uh, feel a bit better. Um... Which uh, is quite surprising for anyone who's ever tried sleeping pills. Uh, those those are generally not <laughs> something that will make you feel better. But uh, in this case, it helped. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, as such, no beer for me. I'll just uh, have my uh, cup of tea. Thank you very much. You also don't like tea, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so today we will be looking at uh, a collection, uh, a box from... Um, Ave, Mr. Grimm, uh, a Konami box for the Commodore 64, and it's not a Konami box per se, it's based on Konami uh, arcade games, but it's actually developed by Imagine, um, and it has 10 games, uh, so you know, we've got plenty to look forward to, comes on two cassettes, to, so this is one of those collections that's actually um, quite decent on cassette, um, because uh, yeah, Grisa wants whatever I'm having all the time. He wants he wants everything. Um, kind of funny. I I, I just had uh, a small little dinner, uh, some uh, some herring, um, which might sound really uh, weird uh, for those not Dutch, but um, herring is is a delicacy over here. It's lovely and I love it too. So I just had some raw herring and Griso is all over you then of course. Uh, hey there CDI Arcade. Great to have you. Great to have you. Uh, is Ninja Turtles on here? No, I do have the Ninja Turtles. I actually have both Ninja Turtles for the Commodore 64. Um, like the uh, arcade beat em up one. Uh, and the uh, the game that's more like the NES one. Uh, well, the NES also had the beat em up one, didn't it? Uh, but those are uh, totally separate in big boxes, and those are on disc. And uh, um, I don't have my disc drive out. I still need to look that up uh, where I put that. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, pickled herring is another thing. But uh, we in the Netherlands, we like to eat it raw. Like you've got all these uh, fish stores on the street as well, where you can just buy a uh, a, a nice fresh herring. And you uh, you eat them raw, and you, there's a couple of ways to to actually do that. You can get them on the tail and uh, eat them like that. 
or you, uh, you the Amsterdam sissy way <laughs> is to have little cocktail prickers in in some pieces or you can have them on a bread roll which is actually the way I prefer it because then you actually can load it up with some onion at, uh, as well and I love onions you are getting something buddy uh, and the funny thing with this guy over here is that he keeps begging you for some fish uh, but if you give it to him, nah, it's no, then it's no good. If, uh, but if you can steal it, now then it's treat. <laughs> don't, uh, don't uh, expect anything sensible from a cat. Yeah, there's, uh, I've got, I, I really like the 8-bit uh, dough controllers. Um, I especially like this one, the, the Sega one. Or Sega games, um, uh, or you know anything that uses the three button, uh, um, three button layout. Uh, and otherwise, I'll I'll, I'll just tend to uh, the, you know the, this one, the, the big one. I don't know the names at uh, the top of my head. Um, but they are um, they are great controllers. No other which one you have. Yeah, and this is the uh, the SN SNES one, and this just this is this is great. It, uh, it 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 plays really well. If you play a SNES game on an emulator, I I do prefer this one, I guess. Um, but most of the times, I will have the PS uh, the PS3 kind of one, um, and, and you know this one is also nice because I just like the aesthetics of uh, Famicom controllers in general. Uh, although the, the layout, it, it, it feels off for actually playing um, Famicom games because, you know, the buttons shouldn't be in a diagonal like a diamond like that. Anyway, let's uh, head over to the uh, Commodore screen here, which, uh, if I remember my buttons right, then, yeah, there we go. And uh, load up our first game. Uh, and yeah, the, there's some, uh, some really cool games in here. There's also some uh, less lesser games or at least i'm not a big fan of all of these uh, these titles um it only comes with two cassettes so yeah, that's great uh because that means it's not any multi-loading games uh and yeah there's no there's no speaker in that controller for the pole voice no <laughs> uh so this one is the first one and i think the first game on here did I actually remind it yeah the first game is Nemesis, uh, and then we have Green Beret, awesome game, uh, and then we have M Mickey, or is Mikey, I actually don't know, uh, which has never been my favorite game. Then we have, uh, then we have Iron Horse, actually not sure, because the box itself, and I haven't played these games in, in ages, the box itself, I think actually... Name's Jekyll, so I'm not sure if Iron Horse is an alternate uh, uh, title for that. And uh, Shaolin's Road, which uh, is a bit of a divisive, divisive game, I suppose. But first up, we have Nemesis, and Nemesis is the Commodore 64 version of Gradius. Uh, and it's not the best rendition of the game, I don't think. Uh, but you know, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens uh, as we load it in here. Um, hey there, the the Pirate Gamer Boy Twelve. Great to have you. Always, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, because you know all the stuff about obscurities, and it's always great to have <laughs> some knowledge in that regard. Uh, yeah, Shallow Ins Road. I actually like it, but I hear a lot of people uh, don't care much for the game. Uh, but I don't know. I, I I think it's good fun. I think it's good fun. Uh, there's also uh, a really thick booklet uh, with this uh, collection. Uh, Nemesis, indeed. Let's go. Uh, Griso, can you please... Uh... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey there, Woody Wordpad Gamer. Great to have you. Yeah, Tape Deck. This is uh, the data set loading in the tapes. Um, the tapes that I had as a kit, and I wanted to see if they were still actually working. So I am actually loading them uh, from tape as they just come on out of the boxes as I find this, uh, this stuff again. 
Uh, and hopefully for the better. Uh, we have come across a few tapes that didn't work anymore, but for the most part I'm quite surprised how well these work. Uh, and then it goes into the Commodore 64 and that goes into the capture card through S-Video. Um, although, you know, even with S-Video, um, basically because of those, those chips, they're kind of eh. Uh, you will always have like a bit of a uh, uh, like those those geo bars on comedy 64s uh, let's see yeah and yr kung fu uh, now that you mention it is uh, it's also a game we will be running into just later on another game I actually kind of liked as a very early uh, fighting game. Um, but yeah, that's one more of a one-on-one -on -one fighter, and um, Shaolin's Road is uh, it's more arcadey fun, I think. But both great games, I find. Uh, anyway, what I want to do is actually uh, enlarge my screen here. Yeah, load times can be very, very long on the tapes. Uh, these aren't as bad because there's no multi-loaded games this time around. But uh, yeah, if you <laughs> Like back uh, a couple of weeks ago, or even last week, we had uh, we had some issues with that. Especially if then something doesn't work, uh, you're just loading, 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 and something goes wrong, and you're loading, loading, loading again, uh, and you're basically only playing five minutes for every 20, uh, 20 minutes of uh, of loading. Uh, and yeah, you're right. This uh, this version is uh, rather notorious. This is a uh, a pretty poor version of uh, uh, Gradius, but uh, it's what we had. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are certainly better versions uh, out there. But this one didn't get a whole lot of love. It's kind of curious. On the, I didn't notice just before I start the stream. I I, I was thinking like, will I um, uh, for the thumbnail at the Konami logo? For some reason, on the box, they switched the coloring of the Konami logo, uh, like the red and the uh, purple. I don't even know what they're supposed to be. Um, but yeah, the red should be on the bottom, and for some reason, on this box, they have that reversed. Kind of an odd thing. I only noticed before, uh, just before starting the stream. Uh, stream. Uh, there's also another uh, little leaflet here for like an addition because they made the menu and then they noticed that some things needed to be different I suppose for... Is this for YAR Kung Fu? Uh, yeah, I don't think these things take very long to load so we probably don't get into much reading I don't think. Yeah, that's why I noticed it, CDI Arcade. Indeed, the, uh, the the logo in the actual screen looks great. It's the actual colors as they're supposed to be. So weird that on the box they just turned them around. You'd expect that is a asset they actually got from Konami, but uh, I guess not. Is there anything... Uh, oh, it's all... It's not in the actual order we are playing at the manual. Yeah, it's, it's not even... All the games are uh, mixed up as well between the tapes. Where are they? Oh well, this one should be loaded now, right? Here. Here Kung Fu, here on Kung Fu 2, Hyper Sports, Green Beret, yeah, that one is on this one. Mickey, this one is on this one. Ping Pong, this on the other one. Oh, Nemesis, here we are. Let's see if there's any interesting uh, blurb here. Nemesis. The planet Nemesis, a peaceful Earth-like world, is now under an all-out all space attack from the old Nemesis enemies. Beings from a from the subspace star cluster of Bacterion. The people of Nemesis are in danger of being completely destroyed by the uh, Amoboid. Uh, Bacterians. Okay. To save them, to save them, you have just launched the prototype hyperspace fighter. 
the Warp Rattler. <laughs> the entire galaxy awaits your duel to the death with the evil Bacterians. Your objective is the Bacterian Super Fortress. Xuros. What's with those crazy names? Always in those space operas, right? Uh, to reach this, you must steal the enemy power capsules along your route and boost the warp, uh, warp Rattler's hyper powers. You are the last hope for the gentle people of Nemesis. You will need all of your courage and concentration to win get ready to blast off all right and uh, as we are done with loading probably should get that one off um uh, Mr. Grimm, yeah the MSX uh, especially the first one didn't do scrolling all too well although uh, like Salamander on the MSX is actually a pretty decent uh, uh, version of that game. Uh, and Worry Ward Gamer, uh, two invaders and raid on the boom. They are good CD. I actually have never played those C64 games. Should check those out. Thanks. Uh, anyway, uh, one player game. Can you actually play this one with two players? I don't remember. I think if I remember right, I also. Uh, ooh. And I'm missing all the freaking power ups. <laughs> uh, I think you actually need to press space to initiate it. No. Crap, what was that? Whoa, boy. Second button. Uh, second uh, second button. Uh, ba uh, bullet I find I, of course, had to fly into. I, I just had to. <laughs> Man, this is... Uh, this is difficult. Uh, yeah, Mr. Grimm, the Castlevania on the MSX is... Uh, it's... It's okay. It's, it's kind of interesting because in that version you kind of get, uh, also on the uh, Famicom Disk uh, System version, you kind of get a feel what they were going for, like uh, with more of an RG, uh, RPG setting in Castlevania, not strictly platforming, but you know, having um, job interactions and such. I don't know how to use the power-ups anymore. Uh, I thought it was with the spacebar, but that didn't work. Should have looked that up before I started. And there is auto fire, but it's uh, it's pretty slow. So you know you're pretty you're better off just mashing the button here. Uh, and even then, it's kind of hard to actually get the oh great. Even then, it's kind of hard to uh, to even get the power ups. <laughs> uh, excuse me, what hit me there? Well, that went well. Let me see what the... Controls... And uh, yeah, and there's also a, uh, uh, a Contra on the... Uh, well, it's also a Contra on the uh, C64, by the way. Uh, well, what's the name of that one, actually? Um, not Probotector. Uh, but it has a different name. But on the on the uh, MSX is also a Contra that is basically a uh, one screen uh, affair where you just have a flip screen. You know, as you go through the different screens. Uh, controlling the game can be played. Yeah, but I want to know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it appears that B is the weapon. Uh, select the weapon. Okay. Would space would have been handier because do you remember? You know, playing back in the day, you just place the uh, uh, the Commodore sixty four on the ground and you tap the space bar with your uh, bit, with your big toe. <laughs> uh, tapping in the B is a bit hard. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, not working. Oh, it, oh crap. Uh, you know what? Oh, I turned on the music. Well, that's probably for the better, actually. <laughs> that must be uh, M. I must be misclicking there. Not sure. Usually they have this on by default. I guess... Uh... No, it doesn't seem to be on the B. I don't know. Always with the controls. Sometimes the controls also... Maybe I'm just reading the wrong system controls. I don't know. The music at, at least, you know, it's a rendition of what you'd uh, expect from a Gradius uh, game. I'm complaining about the music. Not sure why they... Uh... Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Why they would uh, opt to disable that. Ah, oh, man. By default. Yeah, you really need the missiles there. For the, for the ground targets. I just need to... Maybe it was 8. Not, not be, not be very weird. Nope. Man. Way to go, Seb. Way to go. Awesome. Um, I think that's also a bit of a weird thing with this game, where the power-ups seem totally random. That's not the thing in... Yeah, there is a uh, version of Contra on the Commodore 64 and it has a completely different name and I, I totally forget it now. Uh, Grizer or something? Grizer? I don't know. Uh, man, I don't know how to uh, make the, the power-ups to uh, do anything. That's... that's uh, Parodius on the C64? I don't think so, but not not that I know of at least. Um, let's see again if maybe I'm missing something very obvious, which, you know, knowing me, that can oftentimes be the case. Uh, maybe, let's see. Joystick controls, left, right, up, down, fire, select weapon is B. Press S to start, 1 to quit. I, I can't make anything else out of that. And then there is uh, different things for the Spectrum. But we are not playing on the Spectrum, so that should not be a thing. Uh, weird, weird, weird. Just weird in general that they... I, I'm going to give it one more try with the B button. Uh, that, that B is just such a weird... That's just uh, B. Did I select it? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it, right? So, let's see what happens if we collect another thingy. No, that nothing happened. Nope. Hey there, Wouter! Give right? Why doesn't the manual say that? Oh wait, I'm already dead again. Man, I can't do that uh, as I am playing because the keyboard is just too far away and I'm... <laughs> uh. Uh, let's uh, quickly get rid of those messages. If I can, or not. Oh well. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, the Highlander. Uh, great to have you, Walter. Uh, shift right. I... Mm, 
Let's uh, let's try that. Yeah, YouTube tends to uh, uh, get rid of them, but because because I have the the chat thing read everything to me, it's quite an annoying to have that heard uh, in your ear. Uh, and you know, it gets uh, sent to the stream right away. So you know, want to uh, get rid of it as we go. Still learning all about streaming. <laughs> I actually uh, was very... Yeah, right, right shift also doesn't seem to do anything. This right shift, right? Oh no, that's this one. There we go. Bouter, you saved it. Look, now we can, now we can do stuff, man. It's... Oh yeah, this is much better. I hope. Uh, <laughs> it keeps being annoying that... Uh, like I can't quickly... And there we go. That, that uh, I was afraid that's what happened. I wonder why the manual says to B. Is that is that a normal thing for? Uh, is that like normal notation on the Commodore 64? Or is that just a misprint? Like uh, something that was actually uh, intended for the Spectrum, for example. The speed is always nice. Yeah, I was just saying, like, <laughs> there used to be the way, put the uh, Commodore 64 on the ground and use your big toe for the, uh, for the, uh, for the controls that were needed on the keyboard. Ah, damn it. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> uh, one more try, because, you know, uh, actually, um... I, I remember this game being worse than it actually is. Uh, I mean, it plays okay. It's not the fastest, but... I kind of like the music. And there are much better uh, shooters out there for the... Commodore 64. I'm missing everything. But... You know, this, this was one of the earlier ones, I guess. I miss everything. Holy cow. Only one gave me the power? Come on. Cheap bastards. No CDI prototype of this one, I don't, uh, I'm afraid. Yeah, I have this one, uh, oh wait, I should uh, show you afterwards. I, this is from the Konami uh, Imagine Collection, the um, um, Imagine Arcade Collection, I think. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's true, that's true, that's, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I can always use that excuse for sure. Oh man. Let's see if I can actually get the, the thing now to uh, bombard them. Because I keep getting blasted by those freaking bullets that are um, you know, coming from below. And let's just not get distracted by any more power-ups. And just go. And only... Reach for the keyboard if absolutely required. I don't even get it for. Damn it! <laughs> okay, I think this is our uh, last life here. It shouldn't be hard to just do this blind, you know. But <laughs> Anything, I should be good at that. Oh no! Man, I keep missing the last couple. Those, uh, they move quite... There we go. Oh, 
concentrate. Almost flew in the wall there. That was there was a way to show how not to concentrate. There we go. Ah, damn it! Why did I do that? Ah, that was a shame. Uh, yeah. So, about it, this is. Uh, I will just have it, just show you on the big screen here. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. So it's uh, it's from this box, pretty pretty common box, I do think. Um. And uh, yeah, this is the part in the manual. Uh. Does it actually show up? I don't know. There we go. I think that, that, that really says, uh, like, press B, it's B, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that's, that happens sometimes, um, with these older games, yeah, the box art is pretty cool, nice little, uh, look at the different games, on the back you also have a small screenshot, actual screenshot from the Commodore 64 too, by the way, um, you know, so you know this was a, a bit of an older a system otherwise they would just put in a uh, screenshot for the Amiga and uh, they would look much much uh, more awesome uh, anyway let's uh, reset this one does it reset it does because there should be another one on this side so from a time where Konami still knew what uh, what video games actually meant, right? I mean, I guess the only thing they remember is that you need to chuck coins into a machine. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, they seem to have forgotten totally uh, what it all means. Green Beret, which is a uh, very difficult game, but uh, but good fun. Uh, on the NES in the US, it was also known as Russian Attack, Russian Attack, I should say. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is cool stuff. Uh, let's see, if there's uh, should be a little read up in here as well, right? Uh, we're waiting for the game anyway. Um, it's. It's a cat. Have you ever seen a cat do anything useful? <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim Sterling has, uh, has, has read many, many a publisher through the ranger, and uh, rightfully so, I suppose. Uh, and Konami was one of their first uh, butcherings. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Konami has really, really fallen, fallen far. Should be a nice uh, screen, a graphic coming up, if I do remember correctly, with some music. There we go. Uh, yeah, I don't check out uh, Jim the, uh, Jim's stuff as much anymore, uh, because most of it really started to center around herself. But uh, the actual things you brought up, uh, it's good. She, them, I, I don't remember uh, where we are with uh, uh, with Jim. But uh, yeah, it's, she has been so much centering around herself and the drama involving her. And, and, and uh, just don't feed the trolls because it starts to drag into your own content and that's uh, that's a shame. Because it's diluting the actual message that was so important. Um, the game, Rescue the Captives. You are the Green Beret, a highly trained combat machine. Your mission, infiltrate all, uh, infiltrate all four enemy strategic defense installations. You are alone against immunerable odds. Have you the skill and stamina to succeed?
Man, would that be great? Symphony of the Night for uh, for PC. That would be awesome. Uh, especially like, well, there's some. I think if you get it, the what was the PC, uh, PSP version that was. Uh, I think that's still fairly affordable. But like the uh, the original for the PS1 or uh, the Saturn, yeah, good luck scoring those. Uh, I think this one didn't have many many things that uh, you needed to do with the with the maybe space to shoot. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, to shoot you need to use the keyboard. Yeah, and on that version it's actually, I think, locked as a... Uh, you haven't, uh, you have to unlock the, the version on the PSP version, didn't you? Uh, oh man, Wouter, that's such a shame. Oh well, never mind, it's not so a shame, you made good bung, uh, you, you could make made good buck for that one yeah this man those prices uh, I would love to have a copy but uh, pff, not for those prices no game is worth it in that MP and uh, then uh, I will just emulate it then <laughs> uh, I love having original games on the shelves but if they uh, become too expensive then forget it uh, I haven't found it but I I, I, I am fairly sure that I actually do have a second copy of uh, Zelda's Adventure somewhere which I do need to sell um, which I wanted to sell back then when that was just never happened and now I'm like huh good thing that never happened uh, still need to find the thing uh, but that thing has gone up in price insanely high Is uh, is Symphony of the Night on Steam? I did not know that. That uh, that, that would be uh, nice. Hey there, Mark. Great to have you. Hope you're having a uh, great time. Uh, for those on YouTube, I am very sorry. There is a giant delay for some reason on the stream. Uh, for some reason, if I connect to YouTube immediately, right directly through OBS, it's it's blazing fast. But as soon as I use Restream, it it gets a giant delay on top of it, and I'm not sure what's causing that. I still need to look up to it into it. Um, but on the bright side, I did actually uh, get I think something like a a um, very rudimentary point system up on YouTube. So if you do exclamation par, uh, exclamation point uh, points, you actually get like uh, a point uh, 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 overview of how many points you got. Yay! We can have redeems and all that kind of good stuff eventually. That'd be nice. <laughs> I did someone, uh, I did see that uh, CDI Arcade, like uh, that someone is porting Symphony of the Night to, uh, to the Genesis, that looks insane. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go for another gaming disaster as I try to get my way through the first level which um, spoiler alert it's not gonna help uh, happen love this music by the way it's very it's not much music but it's cool and yeah I can Oh crap, I did not intend to jump. Yeah, that's the problem with the jump on the on the up button and using a not so great uh, joystick. Yeah, I do um I think I think I agree CDI okay. The uh, looks on this one uh 
it does look great but I have a lot of issues with actually um, like seeing if they are shooting because I think I died to a bullet there I did not see any bullets <laughs> It's a very, very difficult game. Um, but I think that's the case with every version. If anything, I think the C64 version is actually one of the easier versions. Uh, if you spend time to memorize it at least. Yeah, this is a perfect, uh, perfectly... F How did I miss him? Uh, this is a perfectly fine uh, edition of, of, of this game, or rendition, I should say. Uh, but yeah, the hit detection is <laughs> sometimes a bit suspect. Uh, and yeah, if you pick up that, that thing, you do get a shot, but it only has limited ammunition. I think you only get like three shots or something. And again, you need your big toe on the spacebar for that one. Uh, so I, I, I intend to just not bother. Man. You should not get in the middle of these dudes. Let's just keep running a bit. Seems to be better. There we go. I mean, someone has to be the worst uh, about her. Someone has to be the worst. But ah, oh, yeah, that's uh, that's the dropkick dude. <laughs> you need to duck with those. Uh oh. Again, the bullets. They. Uh, I don't, I don't react well to bullets. Well, no one really does, do they? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's give it another try. I do like this. I really, if I want to be good at any game, I really need to practice it quite considerably. Um, to be half decent. Oh, I actually heard him shoot this time. <laughs> Makes you drop dead, huh? Oh no, the jump! There we go. Ah, I heard it too late, too late. Once you get a nice flow going, it uh, yeah, it kind of works. But yeah, as you can see, this is a perfectly fine version. Um, uh, I've only played the um, the NES version very little of it, and I am if I play this game, I am much more drawn to uh, to this version for sure. Um, some reason the knife didn't come out um, it's just something you know when you get are used to it, it it just feels right but it's not to say that the NES version is worse I think they're pretty Ooh, much uh, much kind of even uh, and but I do think <laughs> but bullets I do think I actually prefer this over the arcade version. The arcade version seems a bit too hectic to me. Strangely enough, it's it's rare, but... Uh, and maybe, again, that is just something because you're more used to this version. Okay, come on. Uh, 
There we go. Uh, was on top of the, uh, the stairs there. Okay, one more try. One more try on this one. Uh, because I know I can do better than this. This was pretty bad. Uh, do also let me know if uh, if the audio levels are uh, good enough. Like if you can hear me alright, if you can hear the game audio alright, or you know if something needs adjusting. Because uh, I I'm still kind of kind. I should not walk and slash. I think that's the issue. Um, still kind of finding the sweet spot on all of the good stuff. There we go. And he still went through me. <laughs> Alright, so taking it easy is not the good option. Uh, seems like when they shoot they are doing that um, uh, in a sitting position from the off screen. Or not off screen, just at the edge of the screen. So maybe you can see it in time that way, but... Uh, my, my field of vision is so focused on the part where I'm moving that I cannot um, keep track of that side of the screen. Anyway, lovely, lovely rendition. Uh, let's move on to the next game. Uh, was that another one on this side? Uh, yes, there was Mickey or Mikey still on this one. So let's see if we can find that one. Uh, not a game I am too fond of, generally. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what it does. Um, but yeah, still really figuring out everything, how it all works. And uh, probably what brought me such a headache to begin with in this week. Just way to focus on stuff. I have no clue what I'm actually doing. Uh, also, the same with uh, trying to figure out Discord and stuff. I was actually kind of surprised, you know, I figured I'd look at up some, some tutorials. And it, it, it was kind of surprising to me that uh, quite a few uh, people over on YouTube have no clue what they're talking about either and still giving tutorials. Uh, which basically tells me it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, things will work out. But uh, yeah, I, I tend to have... This, uh, this need to know exactly how something works. But uh, yeah, it was kind of surprising to me that uh, especially when it came to the roles and permissions as such, people didn't seem to really understand it themselves. Uh, but oh well. Yeah, so I'm ju I'm ju I will just try it out and see what happens and if I can uh, make a uh, Discord server and not blow up. But I also want to work on that, uh, you know, the stream bot. And because I have YouTube and Twitch at the same time, I want to make it that they uh, both can have a point system. Uh, it's not like I'm going to be a Twitch affiliate anyway. Um, so, you know, uh, been working on that and uh, slowly it's coming together a bit. Uh, but yeah, it it uh, it just proved a bit too much uh, last week, unfortunately. But uh, you know, it's, 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 it's sometimes happens. Sometimes happens. Not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal on the day itself. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I can make Twitch affiliate. Um, I, I'm sure. Issue is that uh, I, I started doing the streams on YouTube. That's where most of my audience is, and I would prefer to just do the multi-stream. So, and if you multi-stream, then Twitch is, uh, doesn't doesn't want you to be affiliate. So you know that's never gonna happen. So um, I think that's okay. I think that's okay, So, but that does mean that I need to find an alternative way to make a point system and a redeem system just to have some fun on the, on the, um, you know, throughout the stream itself. But I don't want to divide up the groups, have a specifically thing for Twitch and a specifically thing for YouTube. Everyone should just be able to use the same things. 
Uh, hopefully, hopefully. I think it's possible, but it just takes uh, takes some time to actually make that uh, happen. Um, but some things are seemingly starting to work out. Uh, so say I, I did test like a sort of rudimentary point system on YouTube, where we now can uh, you get added some points, which should be working. I don't know. Uh, I also made it so that the chat actually doesn't. Uh, keep track of it. Yeah, it's in your contract. If you uh, if you are on Twitch, you cannot multi-stream. I find uh, Discord is much the same for me, Mark. It's it's very overwhelming, like the amount of options you have, and then. Um, how to to manage it all and it is one of those systems that if you don't set it up properly and you give one item the wrong click uh, you can really open it up to a lot of misuse and and just make a total mess or just blow it up entirely for your server um, so I'm super uh, uncomfortable in dealing with that but uh, you know slowly but surely we we got and then you start to look into bots and you get even more confused like what you give those rights but do those rights also conflict with other rights from other users and yet it's a total mess it's a total mess and it gave me a headache <laughs> uh, well maybe I don't know <laughs> something did um, but I'm, I'm suspecting I was just getting way too overworked and stressed on that kind of stuff. Just being too uh, overwhelmed with all the information and such. Uh, just having a bit of a look here if uh, the thing actually works. It did make some files. Yeah, but that's <laughs> that, that that's me, you know. I see something that uh, oh, that's possible too. How do you do that? And then you just you 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 start digging into this rabbit hole and it goes very very deep very very quickly. Uh and I, yeah, I don't have those um I have don't, don't have those systems in place in my brain that just say stop. Just take it easy. Take this first step and, you know, be happy with with that. Nope. Sepp has to dive in straight into the deep end. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite annoying being me now sometimes. Uh, yeah, lethal trade indeed. Oh, it already loaded. Okay, Mickey. So, um... Or is it Mikey? I don't know. I think it's it's actually Mikey. But I always said Mickey. Um, anyway, let's try and get out of class. Uh, so let's see how this is. Whoa, boy. Uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Sit nicely. We're behaving. We behave. Get, get, get lost, dude. Okay. Oh, oh, right. To be right up in the grill. Come on. I don't know how to re uh, <laughs> control it yet. Of course. As per usual. Come on. Or do you just, or do, did you just have to collect this one? These things. You can shift them up, right? Uh, I don't know how to shoving up from the bench. Whoa! Stop shouting at me, dude! Like sometimes it. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, but that's only to uh, to actually uh, you know, like we're behaving. 
Okay, so you need to... You're right next to me! Why do you need to shouting? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is there an end? Where's the end? Oh crap, that's not a return. No! No! Uh, and I, now everything is falling apart. <laughs> Mouter, you must be grinning right now. Like, oh my god, this, this, this C64 noob. Uh, let's see. Of course, I also didn't use the counter to know where we uh, where we actually started. Let's see if we can find it again. I am so impatient. <laughs> no, nope, this is not good. A bit further, maybe. Or let's just you know, let's just uh, skip that one for now. Maybe we can get back to it uh, at the end. But that didn't go well. I didn't even get out of the classroom. What the heck? <laughs> uh, again, it's also not a game I'm totally fond of. I mean, it's kind of nice that it has multiple uh, kind of sections to it. Um, but yeah, I, I, see, I can even mess up a score screen. <laughs> Holy crap. Um... What kind of happens here with me is that I am not super familiar with the Commodore 64 keyboard. So I tend to um, like hit buttons like I do on the normal keyboard. But obviously function keys on the C64 are laid out a bit differently than from a actually actual keyboard. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that makes me um, hit the wrong buttons now and then. Oh well, that happened. <laughs> uh, which game did we load now? I actually hit the uh, the space thing, but I don't actually. I didn't actually read the name. I'm all over the place. Uh, Nemesis we've played. Uh, Jekyll, I think, was on this one, right? Although on the cassette tape itself it says, uh, what did it say? Iron, iron something? But I think it was Jekyll. Which I don't actually remember. I mean, I know the NES game. That's, uh, that's fantastic fun. Let's see what comes up. Because I don't know. And let's uh, get us another cup of tea. Not actually tea, but you know. Some uh, herbal decoction. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Iron Horse. That's what it was uh, called on the tape. Is that actually a alternate name? For Jekyll? Doesn't look like Jekyll. I'm, I'm, I don't remember this one at all. Yeah, this, this doesn't look like Jekyll at all. Uh, so I don't think that Jekyll that's in the box on and, and in the manual is actually on this game at all. Yeah, that's so weird. Also, the back screenshot is Jekyll. Yeah, looks like it, Red Dead Redemption uh, on C64. Uh, I don't remember this one at all, but maybe once it has loaded, probably. Uh, this site also has, I think, Great Escape, which is another game I never played much because uh, 
that went uh, way past my head. Just on here. I don't actually see it. Uh, typical, typical for me. Oh, jailbreak, I mean. Jailbreak. Oh, wait. Jailbreak is not the great escape. The great escape is the... Uh, uh, the simulation one, right? Jailbreak is, I think, actually an action game, so that might be good. Uh, another one I don't remember too well. It's so fun, you know, playing these tapes again. It's been so many years that I've actually uh, loaded these up. And it's just fun uh, exploring them again. And, uh, you know, just seeing what's on there again. Playing some games that I haven't played in years. Uh, most of these I've never also bothered to actually load in a uh, emulator. I mean, some exceptions. Like Green Beret I actually did play a few times, I guess. Um, but clearly, not very recently. <laughs> um, I haven't been playing too many games in recent years in general. So, you know, it's, it's great to be playing some actual games again and just uh, get some... Uh, Get some mileage out of your games again. And we're done with the music. Sad face. I always liked it when they had um, uh, music in the loaders. Who's a good boy for today? For once. <laughs> He also knows that there is more treats to be had, so, you know, you better behave, otherwise you get nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> I know many streamers, they, they put the cats outside of the place where they are actually streaming. Uh, and uh, being at it now for, for a couple of times with Griso here, uh, I can uh, kind of understand now why, but, uh, you know, it seems like uh, now I'm too late. I'm just doomed to this now. <laughs> uh, but uh, overall it's okay. But yeah, as soon as you start uh, coming in for some strokes, he will start chewing on you. Although he never... He never does... Uh... He's never out to hurt you is what I'm trying to say. He can chew on you, he can put his nails in you, uh, but generally speaking, your arm, or whatever he has got, is pretty safe. Like, see, he's chewing on me, that's no bother. And, and don't do this with any cat uh, that, you, uh, that you know, or especially don't know. Never do this, because it, uh, it, it tends to um, lead to this kind of reaction, where they start chewing on you. And if you don't know your cat is a nice cat, then that can uh, that can leave your arm pretty much scratched up. But as you see, Frizo, even though he's pretty, uh, you know, hanging in there, he doesn't really do much. He's still pretty, pretty mild. Yeah, you can do all you want, Frizo, but uh, I'm I'm not too bothered by it. <laughs> He, I have never seen him actually, um, even the one time where he just gets uh, super angry uh, when he's uh, for the trimming. Even then, he can easily... Uh, uh, do I need to press push port 2? I am in port 2. Select joystick. I need to... 1. Okay. I don't remember this game at all. Should also... Press. Is this actually a uh, mapping feature? That's actually kind of cool. Uh, all joystick. Full weapon fire. I guess space. Another one for. Ooh. Oh no, this has a lot of keys, I'm afraid. Uh, let's see what happens.
Uh, select one or two players. One. Let me piss him. Okay. Why didn't I think of this uh, in the in the previous games, huh? I vaguely remember this game, but not very much. Uh, yeah, and this is going well. This is going super well. Now the bullets. Well, that went well. <laughs> Let's give this another try, huh? Game over. Player. Hold up, use your pistol. Uh, okay. Because you can't move and shoot at the same time, I guess. There we go. I was so bad, the music didn't even start. Man. Do you need to get that money back too as well? I don't know. This is... I am going to try and play it with... A one-on-one -on -one copy, huh? Let's just play it um, like I normally would. See how far we can go. Not very far. Man! The enemies move uh, really fast. And with the different planes, it just makes it a bit difficult. I'm not sure what the many money bag is there for. It doesn't seem like I can get it. Probably another game I should have read. Yeah, they can easily catch me if they uh, uh, come from the background or the foreground. Well, you can get it. But as soon as you do, you're dead. Man. This is uh, this is really a bit too fast for me. No wonder I didn't re recognize the game. I also uh, because this this apparently is a um... now we've got the whip. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it's it's a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, because this should be based on an arcade game, right? I don't know this arcade game. Ooh. Are they following set patterns? It kind of looks like they do, don't they? Like based on the colors? Yeah, I'm not getting far. Can you also get on top? Maybe that's easier. I mean... 
if there are, if they, if they, maybe it's a pattern thing where the different colors move in different ways. I think. I just don't know. What's the uh, it's a punch? It doesn't seem like a great idea at all, but let's try it. Yeah, that is sound. See, can we go in here? Maybe this is easier. No, it still has two planes. The bastard walked backwards. Yeah, uh, I'm not really good in this game. Yeah, but big surprise, I know. <laughs> Um, another game that you really, really, really need to practice a lot to get any decent in, I, I suppose. Uh, this should be... Are we actually getting... No. Need to reboot. Uh, this should be another game on here. Uh, jailbreak. Not the great escape. And let's, uh, let's give Fleezo some more... Uh, a treat while we're at it. What would you like, buddy? What would you like? Uh, oh, Shaolin's Road is on this one as lost. Okay, that's cool. Let's see if I can actually, uh, I mean, surely I should be able to at least beat level one in that one, right? <laughs> we should get a nice uh, new picture here as well with some music again, I hope. Uh, it seems like Imagine it, it's, it's, does that fairly well. Yeah, again, YouTube so delayed, I have no clue why. It's, uh, it's weird. It's like half, uh, half a minute to minute behind. Hopefully, uh, we can sort it out sometime. Because it is, uh, it is quite annoying to me. <laughs> and uh, Restream, of course, has no clue what happens. Uh, they just are like, uh, well, you need to... Uh, you, your upload need to be good. But yeah, my upload is good. Well, now at least it is. Um, but otherwise it also wouldn't be coming through Twitch, right? <laughs> and if I cut out Restream altogether, it works perfectly fine on YouTube. So I just have no clue what's happening. Shaolin's Road! Kinda of shame that uh, Jekyll is not in here. I don't think I've ever seen Jekyll on the Commodore 64. did not even know it existed, to be fair. Oh, look who's awake now. Let's see.
As our hero Lee, you have finally mastered the secret martial art, Jin's Shaolin. You find yourself trapped in the temple by hordes of triads. Using your kicking skills and magic powers, you must fight off the triads and get out of the temple and head for the road to freedom. At each step of your way, on your road to freedom, you will encounter more and more of the triads. And at each stage, you will discover uh, one that is particularly skilled. Look out for flying kicks, breathing flame and punches that come clear out of nowhere. Great. Uh, anything special on the joysticks? No. I think this was uh, fairly self-explanatory, if I remember uh, correctly. Look at the stash on that guy. Eh? <laughs> Freezer didn't even do that. No, you're still here, so you didn't do it this time. Uh, something fell. I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's the, the game box actually fell from the table. Normally it's uh, because of the cat. But yeah, this time you didn't do it. What's wrong? Didn't have enough treats. You get more, you get more. Anyone ever uh, played the arcade version of uh, Shaolin's Road? I find it a uh, pretty, pretty decent game. Uh, also on the uh, 64, I quite like it. Um, did see a comparison sometime where it didn't come out too favorable, but I never actually tried any of the other versions of it. So, I don't know. But from what I've played on the Commodore 64, it's, uh, it's quite nice. Are we done? Oh, no, more loading. <laughs> oh, man. A loading experience on the C64. There we go. Cool little uh, intro music here. You just had some, man. Let's go. Oh boy, it does move slower than I, uh, I uh, thought it would, but uh, whatever. <laughs> Whoa. Gotta watch out for the fireballs. I think it, they are fireballs at least. Please, so I can't see the right side of the screen. And I get hit by the left side. Awesome. Hey there, Ben. Doing pretty, pretty well today. How are you? Uh, although my uh, my my skills have been uh, absolutely abysmal today. And Grizo's there, of course, as well. I'm not sure where he's actually going right now. Oops. 
Uh, yeah, I know what that's like. <laughs> Uh, send what through uh, exactly, Dwen? Okay, only one more dude remaining, I think. So... Wow, the hit detection is a bit wonky. Oh, right, right, yeah. Uh, I, I really have no clue what's causing that. Yeah, YouTube seems to be behind like... YouTube seems to be behind like a entire minute now for some reason. I have no clue what's causing it. Uh... Maybe I should just forgo on um, actually using Twitch and YouTube, just stick to one, but I don't know. Let's uh, give that another try. I know I can do better. But I must agree, or, or at least admit that I thought the game was moving a bit faster than it actually is, but whatever. This Shaolin's road is at least a lot better than the one on the CDI, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure there is a way to fix it, I just, I, I have no clue. Um, the only thing that seems to be causing it is Restream and I, you know, you don't really have any control over that. What I can try next time though is maybe lower the bitrate a bit. Maybe it has a harder time for some reason getting it through uploaded to YouTube. I don't know what it would make for a difference, but Nope. Because I was on ultra low latency first and then it was uh, half a minute delayed so I figured I'm going to use I, I'm just going to use the uh, the normal uh, setting that restream actually defaults to and now it's a uh, now it's a minute delayed so uh, clearly that didn't improve it but you know the ultra low latency was also another solution But it did make it worse, so, you know. <laughs> I don't get uh, technology. It's a, it, it's a mystery. Yeah, if I look like on my OBS and I, I change it over, I look at the stream on Twitch. It's about 5 seconds delay, and if I look on YouTube, it's like a minute delay. I have no clue why. Which was uh, especially apparent when I had the timer on the screen for, you know, when the stream starts. But oh well, it is what it is, you know. Someday, someday, it will work perfectly. <laughs> We can also do a flying kick. That's probably easier. Twitch is probably the better. Like, if I look now, I, I just died. Uh, and yeah, on YouTube, it, it's... <laughs> on YouTube, it, uh, I'm still... Still playing, still playing. Yeah, this is uh, this is so far behind. It's crazy. Uh, it was great to have you, Mark. Have a great rest of the evening, and thank you very much for dropping by. Take care. Uh, 
let's uh, just a moment as Griso decided to just go do something and open the door once again. Oh. There we go. Like, Griso is, is just this cat, but whenever he goes out of the room, he needs to open the door like... All the way, the hinges can't go any further, you know. And uh, it's okay that he goes all over the place. Uh, that's why I leave it on a jar. Uh, but whenever he goes out there, uh, it you immediately feel this this airstream. <laughs> and it's like he's doing it on purpose. And he is a cat, so uh, probably he is. go we done right yeah hi buddy are you done whatever you went doing Sounds great, uh, Ben. Good job. And um, for all two free stuff, you can also look at the uh, always. Whoa. You can always look at the uh, uh, YouTube library of, uh, of, of of music you can use. I mean, it's basically stuff that everyone uses. Um, but nothing, you know, if it fits within your video, nothing wrong with that. And we actually get to another uh, scene for once. Uh, do be careful. Do be careful with uh, royalty-free stuff out there, and and be sure to read, like the um, the licensing. Especially if you intend to put ads on there, you want to make sure that they are uh, okay with it. Sometimes it uh, just requires a mention. Yeah, just just be sure to look at the uh, the uh, the licensing. Actually, most of those websites have a special licensing page uh, because copyright free is a great for Google uh, ranking. <laughs> uh, but Google rankings do not read the fine print. And obviously you do not want uh, any copyright ID claims once your thing is up where they can point to the actual licensing page and said, see, see, we told you so. And because it is so common, most of those places will tend to uh, be very clear, like, can I use it for YouTube videos or not? And uh, most of the time it's fine. But many, many times you need to, uh, you need to attribute. You need to attribute it. Uh, and yeah, much the same. Um, I hope this time around I don't get a copyright ID uh, for the Commodore 64 music. Uh, because uh, Press Play on Tape did some covers on Commodore 64 SID tunes, so they tend to, uh, or well, the, the, the publisher that does their publishing, tends to uh, send some claims out on SID tunes, which is quite annoying. Because that will just make ads appear. I'm not sure why I killed that dude across uh, halfway the screen. That seems a bit weird, but you know, whatever. Points is points. Like for the seventh guess and the eleventh hour, every time I'm done with the stream, I get like flooded with copy uh, copyright ID claims as well. But you know, 
Those are the ones where uh, nothing really happens, you just can't put ads on it. Which is fine with me, I don't want ads on my streams anyway. Uh, but I hate it if they add ads because of that their copyright, which uh, especially if it's not really theirs. Like what? So hopefully this time around they won't do that. But we'll see, we'll see. As long as it's copyright IDs that, uh, you know, have no real impact on the videos, I don't care. I'm not even going to bother doing the disputes on those. It's a waste of energy. <laughs> oh, come on. Man, I... The, the, the thing... Like, jumping forward and... Jump kicking is a bit finicky. You need to be very precise. There we go. I think you need to press the, the, the button. Like exactly at the same time as you press the diagonal up. Um, which is not great. My, my joystick in general is not the greatest. He spun right on top of me. And, uh, you know, this game is pretty good, but the uh, hit detection is a bit suspect. Like that. Like what? <laughs> Still, it's a pretty, pretty good game. But, uh, yeah, before we uh, get too attached to this one, let's move on to the next one. Uh, which is... No longer on this tape. So let's move on to tape number Odas. Which will have... Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I forgot. There you are! Uh, let's see, let's see... Uh, and of course it's not rewound, because where would I? Uh, Hypersports, Yeo, uh, Kung Fu, Yeo, Kung Fu 2, and on the second is Jailbreak and Ping Pong. Alright, let's go. Well, let's go rewind first, I suppose. Hey there, buddy. Awake again, huh? And I thought the point system actually worked, but it doesn't seem like it actually is working. Oh well, it did write some stuff, but it's not actually doing the things in chat it should be doing. Whatever. We'll work that out eventually. Whoops. In about a year or so, we'll have a perfect stream. <laughs> So we should be getting some, what's the first one? Oh, Hypersports. Ooh, I don't actually remember what Hypersports is. I hope it's not a big sports compilation. I don't tend to like those much on the older systems. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Kung Fu, yeah, Kung Fu to Hypersports. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those triathlon things, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah. Those uh, those basic sports things. Not really my cup of tea in those uh, older systems. Um, kind of a different loading scene from the previous ones we've had so far. Kind of odd. Normally uh, in these packs they are very, very much the same all the time. But this one is slightly different. No picture. Uh, none of that yellow text in the beginning. Shouldn't matter too much though. And since this tape also has five games, loading should be generally very fast. Luckily. Does have a neat tune though. So yeah, my, my week was so hectic, I uh, I did have uh, get a, I said in my uh, vlog thingy, I actually called it a splitter, but of course it's actually a switch. Uh, and I still haven't even set it up, so, you know. <laughs> I've been all over the place, and nothing's really... Uh, been working out too great this week but you know doesn't have to happen uh, have, have, be, have to be a awesome week every week and the funny thing is I got that splitter to switch uh, between not splitter see I say it again but it's a switch uh, yeah it's a switch I got it actually to switch between the Commodore 64 and the CDI uh, and the funny thing is that, uh, uh, as you might see, the CDI on top has uh, is gone because that's actually over to a friend who's going to uh, uh, mod it up. Um, and one of those mods is an RGB, RGB mod and then it can't go into the switch anymore. So, <laughs> uh, typical, typical um, you know, planning on my part. <laughs> but you know, there will be other things I can probably hook up to that switch. Uh. Uh, regardless uh, to have a uh, fun time with at some point and you know uh, the reason why I have different CDI's there is that I also want a CDI that has no D DV, uh, DVC in there so there's always one I can use uh, still um, but yeah we'll see we'll see and those converters, they are another like whole can of worms with stuff. Something doesn't want to stay on there. Oh well. Stay. <laughs> like I have no... Uh, t <laughs> No understanding of all this this audio and video crap and extending and uh, and converting and all that kind of kind of crap. Like I have no clue what the heck everything means. Uh, so it's always a fun fun little puzzle to figure out how everything works. Um, I have a pretty, I think, decent capture card that just about eats everything, <laughs> which is great in and of itself. I used to have a. Uh, a uh, card that just didn't like certain inputs. Uh, this is... Um, was was Hypersports actually in a Konami arcade game? They did have the other... What was that name? I forgot. Track and Field. That's Konami too, right? Track and Field. Uh, no, I don't care about name. Oh man, this is the Waggle, the Waggle Fest, isn't it? Let's go, let's go! Let's Waggle it! Wait, what? Breath? We don't need breath! We need to go, man! Go, go, go! What are you... I don't get the breathing, is it? Oh, you need to press the button. 
I'm waggling my joystick as fast as way I can. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> those those jokes they uh, they are inevitable when it comes to uh, old microcomputer playing, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, that was terrible. I love to swim actually. I love swimming. Uh oh. There we go. Well, that went well. Again, I, I, I'm not so keen on shooting, I guess. Uh, but yes, yeah, swimming, I love swimming. It's kind of uh, hard to... Really concentrate on this. Um, what would be a good? Because you can't just concentrate on one side. There we go. I finally have it, but it was our last try. That's, that's pretty difficult, but doable if you uh, try it a few times, I guess. We're already dead, huh? Didn't, how did we even qualify in the, with the swimming thing? Uh, is it just going to do the swimming over? Yeah, I'm just going to skip this one because uh, this is just a bunch of these events. There are more events on this. Uh, but yeah, I, I never like those wiggle fests. Uh, <laughs> uh, just give me the real thing. I, I used to be a decently fast swimmer. Uh, not that I ever did competitions or anything, but uh, you know, just uh, it was one of my preferred ways to just uh, keep in shape. You know, it's, it's just great. Being in a swimming pool, it does uh, also hide all the sweating that you do. <laughs> it's always uh, always a plus. Um, but you do want to go when there is actually, you know, lane day, as they kind of want to call it. Where you have to, where you just go and swim uh, like the lanes. And you don't have any of the grannies hanging on the ropes to, you know, discuss the weekend. Uh, because in that point, you have to run slalom across uh, across the whole pool. It's quite annoying. Is it is it messing up? I hope not. You are kung fu is pretty cool. No, I think we're still going. We'll give it. A, there should be a picture coming up, right, with the dude kicking the screen. I think that's uh, that's the case. Uh, Griso, please don't lie on the keyboard. You've you've put off the stream before. I would prefer not to do that again. Uh, and shooting, I, I I never shot much. Um, I did try a few times where they had this this thing set up where you could uh, shoot by hearing, uh, which is a cool concept. The problem is that it becomes too easy uh, to to shoot accurately. But yeah, you would just aim your uh, rifle and it, it kind of was laser guided and the more you got the laser to the target, the higher the pitch became in your ear. Uh, so it was kind of neat, but yeah, because of that, um, it, it, it just became a bit too easy when you had to shoot. I also, don't laugh, did some uh, archery, uh, which I actually enjoyed. I mean, I wasn't great at it, uh, but that is good. Uh, very good, just all-round um, exercise as well. Yeah, believe it or not, it's not just standing there and shooting. I mean, it kind of is, but uh, the actual shooting part is of a bow, and not one of them 
uh, compound bows where it's all most everything is automatic no just you know the the actual drawing back and such that uh, that is actually a good exercise yeah here we go yeah, and all these loading screens have the konami logo in the right way so weird that on the box it's uh, it's it's misprinted funny Uh, for those who haven't seen that, uh, what, what I'm referring to on the box we are actually playing, for some reason they have the colors of the Konami logo switched up. Like where the red thing should be. Are we seeing it? There we go. Uh, like these colors, they should be switched up. The red should be on the bottom. Seems uh, seems like such an odd thing to mess up uh, on a box, but whatever. <laughs> um, and these games are not made by Konami themselves. I don't think. I think I, I don't know if if Konami made any games for the Commodore 64 themselves. I know they made quite a few games on the MSX. Um, But for, you know, more Western computers, I don't think they did much themselves. They just licensed this out. But you would think that it would give the uh, the proper logo for the box. <laughs> oh well. Uh, hey there, Connor. Great to have you. Uh, how are you today? And a uh, good question. When did they uh, make something good last? Uh, if you're not into Pachinko, that, uh, that's been a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Konami kind of kind of lost their way for sure. They uh, they are a lost cause by this point uh, as far as my concerned. Uh, a shame really. They had so many great IPs and it's just getting to waste now. Like what? What was that last insult? Like uh, contra hard corps? Like what? It's just like so insultingly bad. If they even put something out there, that that point, that point, don't even bother. You know. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's sad. It's sad. But yeah, luckily um, these games on the Commodore. These were from the times where. Um, where Konami were a great company, they made out some uh, some great classics. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. Uh, yeah, great to have you on the live stream. It's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's a bit slow today. I'm a bit slow today. Well, I'm always slow, but <laughs> uh, we are going to play some UR Kung Fu, which uh, is actually a pretty decent game on the uh, Commodore 64. Uh, very early. One on one fighter. Uh, I'm probably going to be terrible at it. I don't think I've ever beaten this game before. I was able to get to. Uh, uh, crap, how does this go again? You first have the pole guy, then you have the, the, the star woman. No, then you have the pole guy. First you have the, 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 the first you have the fair one. The only one who you know is, is is fighting fairly. Then you have the ninja stars, then you have the poles, then you have the chain, I think. And the chain is where it really gets super hard, but even the pole is very cheap. Uh, let's just go. Yeah, this is the only fair one. <laughs> uh and of course I don't have any clue how to uh, do any... I don't know, are there actually moves? Uh, and what I just like about this game is that it, it's nice and fast, it's fa nice and snappy and it has just some cool audio. Music is cool, has some pretty cool, unique sound effects. 
It's fun. It just plays well, but it gets real hard, real fast, and real cheap. I forgot the, the third one is uh, uh, Nunchuck Dude, I guess. Because some of those later ones, they basically like uh, stun lock you, and it gets real hard to uh, to get out of there. Dang it! So close. Uh, and I don't actually know how to steer this. I just do things that feel right, uh, which probably will end badly for me. And yeah, you see the cheating is already starting with this uh, this one doing the ninja stars. Like, what? How's that fair in a fight, huh? But uh, it'll get much worse. It'll get much worse, believe me. Yeah, Nunchuck Dude. Forgot him. Uh, and after the chain, there is actually more uh, fighters. I think there's another set after that, or at least in the arcade. I'm not actually sure if that's also the case. In the uh, in this version. And I think there was a trick to actually beating this one consistently, but I of course don't remember. I think I got an extra life there. Nice. Well, we got him about halfway down. Oh uh, yeah, the low health, uh, the low health sound is quite annoying, Ben. But uh, <laughs> it's a thing. I do kind of appreciate it, though. You know, gives you a sign like "watch out, watch out," but it's very, it's very stressful. Yeah, it's quite a, uh, <laughs> it's quite a uh, step up from stress level on the on the Zelda one. Uh, one thing to do note about it, like in the Zelda one, it can take on quite some time before you find some health or actually die. In this one, typically it doesn't last too long, like after you hear it that you are dead. Oh, I actually took a hit without dying there. And we're dead now anyway. I am pretty sure, like this dude, there was a trick to use, like, where you could just spam a particular move that he was weak to. Uh, but I am not finding it. Wow. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't crouch in the in the corner in this one. <laughs> uh, I think this is our last life. Right in the nose, took that one right in the nose. Uh, how do you actually do the jumping kick? That's the knee, that's the knee. Uh, I'm just trying out the different things now, but... Oh, that might be it. Just a normal kick. Okay. Uh, we probably... Oh, okay. Another life. Okay, let's try that. The normal kick seems to be a thing. Yeah, I remember the pole guy being actually uh, the real block of the game for me. Uh, the one that came after it. Because he has a move where he... Basically, stun locks you, and you have. Uh, if he does it, you don't have a chance to get out of here. It's super annoying. Okay, I, I remember being fairly capable of um, the first three, 
you know, getting through there. Ooh, wow, that dude doesn't like this kick at all. Maybe the kick is the way. Yeah, the kick doesn't work as well here. Doesn't work well at all. I think that's an extra life. I haven't seen too many uh, of this. I think this also came out on the NES actually. Or the Famicom, not on the NES, but in Japan uh, as an exclusive. Uh, the NES Famicom also got a sequel, <laughs> and that that one is not so great. Uh, we will also be looking at the sequel in just a moment. Uh, I don't remember much about that one. If that was half decent. Man, now I can't even get past Star. And I think the from the third one on, uh, you also even get a different scene, which is nice. Always, first first try always goes better than the the next one, doesn't it? Man. There we go. Just barely, but uh, whatever, it works. If it works, it works. No for nunchuck, dude. Okay, buddy. No. Ow! Lost it. I only hit him once, what the heck? Wow, what's with the what's with the audio now? It's going nuts. Yeah, that that dude's my uh, my roadblock for today. I think. Let's see if we can uh, load up the sequel here. Uh, but yeah, just really cool game. Um, it just it just plays nicely, uh, you know. It's uh, just a quick pick up and play game. Uh, and I'm sure if you are you know, start to sit down, actually uh, look at the move list. I think that's actually the addendum here for the manual. Um, yeah, you know, you, you get set to move list. Yeah, uh, over here. You know, uh, you, you can probably uh, get somewhat decent in it. Uh, as I said, I remember the third three I could confidently get past and then the pole dude being a real big pain in the ass. Did we not? Uh... Oh, it's loading. Uh, and the chain guy, I think I did get there sometimes, but I don't think I ever beat that dude. And I'm not sure if 
I seem to remember like the arcade version actually has some more, another set of five, and then it repeats, but I think the Commodore 64's version actually repeats there. And of course what's cool is that uh, there is also a two-player option. Uh, but it's maybe unfair, I, I don't know actually, it's been a while since we... Uh, actually try that out but I don't think you get the same combatant so the second player is just uh, you know one of the CPU um, lads so you know if you have the move to throw the uh, uh, the shurikens then uh, that's not really fair now is it <laughs> uh, but I don't remember maybe maybe that's not true I don't know I don't remember this one actually uh, on the Commodore 64 Yeah, so there are another couple, huh? uh, that's what I thought. I thought there were only uh, 10 actually, but uh, 11 makes more sense, I suppose. I know that uh, your Kung Fu on the NES is, is, is really, really bad. No, it doesn't say, say me anything blues. Uh, I doubt I'll ever uh, get that far anyway. Uh, even on the arcade version. Uh, I'm also not familiar with the arcade version of the second game. So let's see. Uh, like the NES version of this, or the Famicom version, is... Um, more like a Kung Fu Master type of game, but then just really bad. Like poor hit detection and such. Well, the issue is with these games, these are just such early one-on-one -on -one fighters, aren't they? Like, uh, it's it's hard to get back to them. Like, ever since Street Fighter 2 came along, like these these kind of games, they are hard to get back to. Um, and I'm also not a big uh, uh, fan of fighting games in general. I, I tend to be very poor at them. Uh, I guess the, the series I've enjoyed the most when it comes to fighting games is uh, is Tekken. Uh, you know, the one series that's notoriously uh, uh, approachable for bottom meshes. <laughs> uh, of course I like that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I like that on the, uh, on the PS1. Never played the arcade version actually. Um, but yeah, stuff like Mortal Kombat. I have some Mortal Kombat uh, laying around, but I'm just so bad at them. I just... I'm not fast enough for all those combos and just... You know, the, the, the small windows you need to actually react to something. To recognize what someone is doing, to react to that. I don't have that. I don't have that at all. Nothing to do with my eyes, it's just my brain is not fast enough. Can't comprehend. I do admire it, uh, like seeing someone very skilled play a fighting game and actually being able to explain what they are doing. Uh, maybe not at the same time because that would be kind of impossible, but just, you know, explaining like uh, what they are doing, why they are doing it at the moment. Uh, that is just, yeah, um, really, really impressive to me, you know, that, that the brain can work that fast, like those couple of frames uh, where you just have this automatic switch somewhere like, oh, now I need to block or, or even that, like, oh, that's something that I can't block, like... <laughs> So nuts. Uh, the Star Wars game from the PS One. I think that's one of the one. I don't remember the name now, but uh, uh, no, I I never played that one. That looks pretty uh, pretty bad. Uh, but nope, never played it. So can't really comment on it. Uh, <laughs> kind of looks like a, a thing that they made for the fans, but not 
too good in execution. I don't know. Um, it, it does have that kind of tech and feel to it, uh, at least when you look at it. But it, I think it also has... I think it also has a ring out feature in that one. I don't know. There's some goofy, goofy fighting games out there, like uh, where it just seems like they slapped on a fighting game on the series. Like there's also uh, that that thing for Castlevania, isn't there? Uh, Castlevania Judgment, I think it's called for the Wii. For all things, where you battle uh, battle out who has the best fashion choice. <laughs> Uh, let's see if I actually remember this one as we, uh, are playing this one. There's some uh, Japanese there. Um, I always thought that Kung Fu is more of a Chinese thing, right? Oh well. Uh, can we play? Can we play? Spacebar? Spacebar. Uh, I guess I need to put it in the other port. And yeah, this is, uh, this does look like the NES version. And we did. This does have better music than the, uh, uh Famicom version, I suppose. Oh, wow. Blow to jump. Can't I jump over it? Nope. Man. Yeah, you can't jump forward. Okay. Whoa, dude! What's with your hair, man? Well, that went well. What the heck is that? We're barely doing any damage. Oh, I kind of like that, punching the uh, the characters. Uh, but where's uh, where's end? Where's the no end? Nope. Really? Really? Oh. It's kind of weird that you have to like the first one. Uh, you could actually. Control in controller port 2. Typically speaking, most Commodore 64 games have uh, uh, the controller port being 2 for some technical reason. Man, we are barely doing any damage, and there's no way to escape from this dude, man. Look at him. Not even halfway. What? In the back, in the back. Ah, oh, I need to turn around. Yeah, this is uh, not going well. I, uh, I kind of get now... Lisa, what are you doing? I kind of get now why this game isn't uh, isn't held as uh, a great sequel. Uh, I think I prefer the first one, for sure. Um, let's see, because there's a few more games on this tape and I want to go through them. 
uh, before we head up. Uh, there is also... Oh yeah, that, that is the third one on the tape, so... We can go to the other side. And there's two more games on there. Oh, wait. Actually, rewind, not fast forward. And now we should get Jailbreak, which I not too familiar with and doesn't ring a bell immediately i actually was thinking about the great escape but that's a different game uh a pretty interesting game if you can get into it uh, but i always found it very difficult um to understand but uh that is not the game that is in here because this is called Jailbreak, and I don't remember what that one was actually like. So it will be uh, will be interesting to see. Let's see if the uh, manual actually says something. Jailbreak. That's something interesting to say. Um, and you know, maybe once the uh, thing the loading comes up, I will actually recognize it. Uh, but yeah, these things have been uh, have been a while since I checked them out. Jailbreak. Here we are. What does Jailbreak say? <laughs> Emergency. Jailbreak. Emergency. The warden has been taken hostage. Rescue him. Protect the citizens from escaped prisoners. Guide the policemen along the street shooting the convicts with your pistol well that's one way to get rid of them <laughs> uh, when you rescue the hostages you will get extra weapons however if you miss your aim and shoot any of the hostages your additional weapons will be lost okay extra weapons rocket gun yeah that's that's really something you want to give to some policemen And a tear gas bomb. Okay. Sounds cool enough. Space to select the extra weapon. Okay, that's good to know. Oh, I do remember this uh, little scene here. So I'm pretty sure that once the game has loaded, I will recognize it. Uh, and apparently this was also an arcade game. I am not familiar with uh, an arcade game called Jailbreak. Anyone? Probably the... Could have been one, I suppose. If it didn't change names. Which can always be a possibility, of course, when uh, it comes to a home conversion. Yeah, I do remember this one. Uh, huh. I don't know why, but I just check now and... It does look like YouTube has kind of caught up a bit when I refresh the page. The delay doesn't seem as big anymore. That's great. That's great. Um... I mean, there's still some delay, but not as bad as before. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm kind of sad that the point system I set up actually didn't work. I tested it out this, this afternoon and it seemed to work, uh, but now it doesn't. <laughs> uh, I don't have project fire start um, I tried to load it at one point from an SD card actually to check it out but that didn't work because it's a multi-disc game uh, and that can be a bit tricky uh, through loading that through an SD loader uh, so that's really one that I need to check out sometime because it does look really interesting like a kind of prototype um, uh, survival horror game isn't it 
and where you actually get uh, bits of story through, you know, just, just cool little uh, scenes. Looks very atmospheric. Uh, just looks very interesting. So certainly something I will need to check out and see if I can get it running. But I do not have the original copy uh, of it. No clue if that's uh, even easy to get by or not. But yeah, it looks like a fantastic game. Not, I think that's actually from EA, another company that uh, kind of turned evil over the years. Um, you know, in that way, you know, being from EA, it's kind of a uh, very, very far predecessor from Dead Space, I suppose. Mixed with, uh, with a good dose of aliens. <laughs> Certainly one of the uh, more interesting games on the Commodore 64 in showcasing what the system is, uh, is capable of. Um, but also a very late uh, game for the system. Uh, and I don't think there even was a tape release for that one. Uh, wouldn't make any sense because it would need so much loading. So... Uh, you know, we've already had some games. Not in this lot. This lot is all good to play through tapes. Because it's just, you load the game in. And then you can play indefinitely. But last week we have a bunch of uh, games where you just need to multi-load. And that is just... That is just terrible with tapes. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that game, uh, Project Firestarter, would be a pain in the ass if you were to actually play that through tape. Uh, but again, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think that's actually available. Uh, and that would be for good reason then. <laughs> uh, I really need to... Um, I, I have a disk drive somewhere. We, we did have a disk drive. I just uh, need to find it again. Uh, because I did find recently a whole stack of uh, uh, floppies. Which um, I'm actually not <laughs> entirely sure how I got hold of those. Uh, but they were in a box with... Uh, some of my tapes, um, so I, I have no clue what's on there. So it will be fun to go through there. Uh, and discs are just nicer to do, go through because they're so much quicker to load. Well, kinda quicker. Uh, the C64 discs are still notoriously slow. Let's, uh, let's see this one. And uh, yeah. Like most games, this one is for port 2. You have a whole box of games where every game is neatly configured to be played in port 2. With the one exception. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this game. Look, they even have the ball and chain still. How did I miss that one? Uh, but somehow uh, they, they did get into the armory, I suppose. Wow, do you need to be... Commodore 64 has uh, many hidden gems for sure, uh, and you know, CDI is some too, I guess. <laughs> uh, you need to be very, very pinpoint accurate with these dudes and be on exactly on their, on their level. Like, look, I'm not hitting them because we're not on the same li line, and and they can hit you when you're not exactly on their line. What? That's not fair at all. Oh no, he shoot he shot the hostage. No. Man, this this moves very slow. Uh, Burn cycle is very cool. It is an excellent game. Uh, certainly one of the better experiences on CDI, uh, although it's also on MS-DOS. Um, though the DOS version uh, looks a bit worse. 
graphical fidelity for some odd reason is uh, quite a bit worse uh, on the uh, on the old uh, MSOS platform. No clue why, because it should be able to handle that. And you have contact damage as well. You're slow and it's very hard to kill the dudes. That is uh, not a good combination here. Well, we get all the stuff. Maybe uh, we can be less accurate with the uh, rocket launcher. Uh, did we actually... Seems like uh, when they shoot, they only shoot three times. Yeah, and the moment they shoot, you're dead. Your, your movement is way too slow. Ah, uh, man. You do get a lot of lives, I think. Let's give it one more try, I suppose. And they're shooting even off-screen? What? I, I will need to check out if this game exists on the arcade. I mean, it must, but surely it's much better than this. This, this doesn't look like a great rendition of this game. Look at that. It just went straight through him. There we go. Nope. I I hit the one behind him though. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh. I'm just going to ignore this dude and uh... oh yeah, contact damage. Damn it! Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, having some RGB on the CDI, getting some more, uh, you know, some neater footage out of that one as well. Some sharp imagery, better colors really uh, make the CDI pop for all it's worth. Yeah, this uh, this game isn't great. <laughs> no. Kind of get used to the timing, I guess. It's just not fun to play. Uh, like the... Like the budget Red Dead uh, Redemption we were playing before, I, I was terrible at it, but at least I had a bit more fun playing that. Yeah, this is uh, this is not great. Uh, I, I really need to look this one up, Jailbreak, if that's an, uh, what the actual arcade uh, version is actually like. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, but this is probably a horrid rendition of it. Bye, Sonic. There you go again. Uh, let's uh, go for the last one, which is a bit of a doozy, I suppose. But, you know, it's the last one on the tape. Uh, I am happy that every game on this collection did work. So that's, uh, that's great, at least.
I mean, that uh, that's been a while, uh, most of the weeks. I mean, or uh, maybe I have now cursed it, that it doesn't work, of course. <laughs> uh, but there we go. Ping pong! What an awesome banger of a game to end off with. That's, uh... <laughs> But yeah, we had some issues the last couple of weeks with a couple of games, and uh, this box at least works flawlessly, so that's cool. Um, so, uh, you know, that uh, might actually become a nice trait at some point. Who knows, who knows. Uh, need to get rid of the stuff anyway, so, you know. We'll see what we can... Uh, someone can become happy with uh, with this collection as well. It is a neat, uh, neat collection. Nice vari vari variety. Dang, words. <laughs> a nice variety of different games from a time where Konami actually made something decent. Hey there, Mr. Mario. How are you today? Um, I'm doing uh, pretty, pretty well today. Uh, a couple of rough days, lots of headaches by just focusing on the wrong kind of things, but you know, that's what you get. And uh, yesterday I just decided to uh, throw some sleeping pills in me and uh, have a good night's sleep and that uh, that helped. That definitely helped. <laughs> so today, at least not as much of a headache. This is just ping pong, right? I mean, it, the music is a bit too epic to be just pinball of uh, ping pong, but I, I, I'm pretty sure this is just ping pong, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, just it's just ping pong, but it's serious ping pong. <laughs> Uh, headaches are, uh, are are one of the. I mean, I'm I'm pretty used to a lot of crap where my body isn't right, but uh, headaches is one of the few things that just shuts me off completely. Uh, I can't ignore it. I can't work past it. Uh, yeah, I do remember Rockstar making a table tennis game. I'm. What was the name of it? Um, wasn't that the one, wasn't that like something, Balls of Fury or something, wasn't it based on that, uh, that? I, I don't remember. Ping pong games tend to be super fast. And uh, generally speaking, these older like uh, tennis or ping pong games are pretty rough to get back to. Um, but, you know, if they are arcadey enough, they can work, but uh, this looks like to be going more towards a a uh, simulation thing. Yeah, I think there was Balls of Fury or something, but I don't remember it exactly. But I do remember Rockstar made a uh, uh, <laughs> ping pong game. <laughs> and it, I, I think it's, it's not even like doing a lot of wacky stuff, which you might hope for then, but eh. It's also not one that I actually played, so maybe I shouldn't do uh, say too much about it and <laughs> go off uh, vague memories that I have of what it was like. I don't remember. Uh, I, I don't even remember what it was released for. I, I, I want to say the Xbox. Ping pong is another sport I am very crap at. <laughs> it just goes a bit too fast for me to actually follow, let alone, uh, you know, get my bet. What what what's the thing actually uh, called? You you whack the ball with uh, into position in time. And I guess that also that there, kind of have to. Play, uh, 
blame it a bit on my eyes as well, I suppose, where the ball just goes too fast to follow for me. Um, some recent releases, Connor. Uh, phew, I don't really know. Uh, I, I I don't tend to. I I generally speaking, I don't buy the newest games in as all. Uh, I typically, if I do, it's a uh, it's a retro game or retro inspired game, like an indie game. Um, but nothing from the big publishers because uh, those tend to uh, not sell complete games anymore at the first day they release something. So <laughs> if I am interested in a bigger game, I tend to wait a year uh, for, you know, the, 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 um, uh, complete edition where they include all the DLC and, you know, the bug fixes because the first bunch of players need to, uh, actually be uh, the QA team nowadays. It's wacky stuff. Um, and yeah, I probably had some decently recent. But I can't really think of anything. <laughs> I've actually... Um, because I had such headaches, I barely played anything. But, uh, you know, the week prior, I was actually replaying some Shadow Hearts. Uh, because I felt like that. And uh, being amazed at how poor that translation actually is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do like the Fire Emblem series. Uh, from what I've played, I'm not... Um, I, I, I haven't played the whole series, but... Uh, yeah, that's one of those series I would love to get into more proper. And maybe, you know, also do them through stream. Those, those games can be fun to stream because you have the stress of losing units, of course. Um, and they're good technical, technical fun. And the stories, generally speaking, are pretty good as well, you know, which helps. Okay, uh, this... Uh... Okay, I lied. Apparently there's two games in this collection that uh, break the rule of 4-2. Yep, this one also has it in uh, port 1. Great. Well, I actually hit it. <laughs> yeah, fire, fire Emblem can be very stressful if you... Um, if you commit to just going with whatever happens. It can be super stressful. Especially, you know, if sometimes there's just nothing you can do. If RNG uh, decides that, yeah, this unit's dead now. Well, so be it. Uh, for the most part, you know, you can prevent stuff from happening. But there comes a point where uh, you, you just are dependent on luck. And then that 5% uh, chance bites you in the ass. <laughs> I mean, the 5% chance of a, uh, of a crit from the enemy. And uh, just ruins your entire day. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's nice. Um, like, it doesn't mean a whole lot uh, partnership on YouTube, but, uh, you know, it, it's just something... It's a neat little... Accomplishment? Milestone? Yeah, milestone is what I want to say, you know. Yeah, and that can be the, uh, the case too. Sometimes the game is just... You get one of those maps and it decides to be a very, very mean. And... Uh, makes you miss every freaking hit. <laughs> um, but, you know, that kind of makes Fire Emblem such a fun game. Uh, game series, I should even say. I, I The one game I actually don't love, uh, the one game I actually did play through uh, in the series is the NES one. Uh, the Famicom one with a fan translation version. Uh, it's very super slow. I, I don't recommend it. 
Um, but it does make you appreciate the series that much more. That so much what the series is built on is is already in that first game. Um, but it is uh, it is so slow because you have to also make your calculations like by hand. Um, it, it doesn't give you a nice little overview. Oh crap. Yeah, I think if you play the Fire Emblem games, you need to uh, allow some RNG in there, you know. It's part of the experience. If you don't want the RNG in the game and you just uh, want to play no risk, then uh, then play um, uh, Shining Force, you know. Also a great series and just plays a bit different. Uh, Mr. Mario, do you play? Uh, do you often find yourself playing the first game? Yes, and that is a bit of a, uh, a curse. Um, because uh, so sometimes I'm like, you hear, you keep hearing like, oh, this game is so great, you need to play it, um, and then I go, but I want to play the first in the series, and Persona is a great example of that. Like you hear Persona uh, Three is great. And then you boot up Persona 1 and you're like, ah, I'm a bit lost. And then Persona 4 comes out and people are like, you have to try that, man. And then I, ah, okay, I'll give Persona 1 another try. And, you know, we're Personas, uh, are we at 6 now? <laughs> and I still have not managed to uh, slug through the first one. And I know they are completely separate, but in my head it is like, I need to first play the first one. And I just, I, I... I keep trying those, and I get lost in them, uh, in the first Persona games, like, th those mazes are nuts, it is very unforgiving, <laughs> uh, and it also has a pretty rough translation, but uh, I think there's good fan translations nowadays, uh, but yeah, I haven't tried it in a while. Um, and it's kind of also why I went back to, uh, uh, I'm just having uh, another go at this, one more go. Oh, I didn't even see this before. Um, I've never actually played through Shadow Hearts 3, so I was like, uh, well, maybe I, I, I should play that one again. Uh, and, and actually play it through, and then I was like, but... So, but Shadow Arts 2 was actually good, so maybe I should play that. And then I like, but actually, when I play through 2, I remember liking the first one so much more. So that's why I'm now starting on the first one. Um, and Kudelka is another game that actually comes before that, and I did play that. Uh, I do have that, uh, and I do like it. Uh, but that's another one of those games that I, I know I liked. Uh, I know I played, uh, but it is it is so slow to get into. Uh, it's hard to recommend nowadays. Um, but it is a fun game. It's a very interesting game, is what I should say. It's just too slow in in its execution. The battles are so slow paced. So I did skip that one to get back to uh, Shadow Arts One, which is surprisingly still really fun to play Shadow Arts One. Uh, it's just the translation is is way worse than I uh, remembered it being. I thought it was actually a really interesting story, uh, but man, the translation is rough. To a point where some things uh, that I think I missed in my first actual playthrough, uh, and I, I kind of read now... Are there any missables and such? And yeah, some things are missables. Uh, but they're so poorly hinted because of the translation. Uh, it's it's kind of ridiculous. But yeah, you can miss out on a complete section of the game. Like a, a little side quest because you hit the wrong option. And it's made so unclear that that option would... Um, you know, is not even the one that you are... It just makes little sense, the, 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 the dialogue is just such butchered in the translation that it just does not make sense. 
But the gameplay itself is great. An awesome RPG where it, it, it really feels very rewarding to just win a battle because it is more skill based. Like it, it's really a good system, the Judgment Ring system, uh, where they bring some skill into an RPG setting. If you don't pay attention, you get uh, pummeled. And it can be very annoying if you uh, have a critical healing moment and that, and just at that time, your timing is up and nothing comes out and you end up losing the fight. Uh, but yeah, so that kind of keeps you on your edge. Uh, the Shadow Hearts games are on the PS2. And Kudelka is on the PS1. Kudelka is kind of a mix uh, between Resident Evil and an RPG. So you get into random... Uh, it, it, it very much plays like a uh, uh, horror survival game from the, from the PS1 era. So like a Resident Evil. Um, but as you explore the place, you get into random encounters. And it's a grid-based tactical uh, thing. Uh, and that, yeah, that is just very slow. But it is a very interesting and atmospheric setting. Uh, so it is still a very cool game. And the Shadow Hearts series is kind of a pseudo sequel to it. Uh, not a direct sequel, but there are some things there. You do re return to that same place, but it's more of a traditional RPG. Uh, but with every move you do... A little timing ring comes up and you have to actually hit certain spots in the ring or uh, uh, to make your attacks actually connect and if you miss at all then you literally don't do the attack uh, and there is a very small area where you can do a bit of more damage uh, but yeah it, it, it's very like there is the, the normal Better equipment gets better damage and such, but uh, you know, uh, if your timing sucks, then you will do no or less damage, and it's 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 just a very fun system to deal with. It makes the battles really rewarding. Uh, Mr. Mario, uh, do you care for fighting games? No, I, I'm just not good at them. Um, I'm just terrible at them. We. <laughs> uh, I had a bit of a talk of it before. The only series I kind of got into was Tekken. You know, the one that is notoriously accessible for uh, button messers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where the rights lie to uh, the Shadow Art series. Um, I think it's from a defunct studio. So, you know, that tends to be... Uh, gives you little hope for those things, unfortunately. But I, I don't think it was ever released either. It's a shame because it's a great uh, series. Um, I will say, like, with every new installment in that series, the tone got more uh, light-hearted and wacky. Uh, it's also why I didn't finish the third one. It, it was just a bit too far removed from uh, what I liked about the first one. It, even the second one, the second Shadow Hearts uh, is is like better executed than the first one in gameplay, but it, it already got so lighthearted. You get a lot of goofy characters, which is kind of fun. Uh, but if you know where the series started, it, it kind of also feels, I don't know, it feels off, you know. It, it started out being more of a dark premise. With some uh, humor mixed in there, but um, yeah, they, they went overboard, and especially the third one, there's just nothing left of it. I don't think the third one actually is uh, connected to the series anymore, it's just like the gameplay is what basically connecting it. But none of what what happened in the first two, or even Kudelka, uh, it's, it's pretty much there anymore. At least the second game has the same protagonist, uh, even though he's vastly different. And yeah, Tekken is about the only game I, uh, the game series, like fighting series, I kind of got decently interested in. 
but I never got good at it or anything. But yeah, I love Tekken 3. Uh, I think that's my favorite of the series. Um, and... Uh, another RPG I didn't like. Let me think here for a moment. Because there's this... I, I, I generally have quite a hard time getting into most of the Dragon Quest games, actually. They are a bit too formulaic for my taste. And just not changing up uh, things too much. And um, Now, I'm saying that, you know, I also realize that I, I just haven't played all of them. Um, but even... Uh, was 10? 10 or 11, the last one. Even that one, I was kind of... I was just getting kind of bored of the same thing over and over again. Um, it, it's just not changing it up too much in, in my experience. So maybe I'm just playing it wrong. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's one series I couldn't get into too much. Um, another RPG series I really don't understand is uh, Saga Frontier. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have that on the PS2. I think it's the second one. And I'm just like, what? what the Saga games in general... I, I, I just don't understand those. It's uh, it's very hard to get into those games. Um, uh, but yeah, t there's so many RPGs out there, aren't there? Um, love my Final Fantasies. <laughs> uh, but even with that, I'm kind of weird. Like, I, I, I like... Uh, I, I guess... I, I'm not even sure what my favorite is. Like, Final Fantasy VII is just the first one I really got into. Uh, no, I, I think Xenos Saga is a different beast. Uh, Saga Frontier is also, uh, it's more like, uh, like Romancing Saga, I think there was. A whole series on. Uh, I there's more Saga games out there. Um, but yeah, all those, those, those Saga games, they have very weird leveling systems. I just don't get it. Um... I suppose kind of comparable to maybe a way Final Fantasy 2 works, where it's kind of an open-ended leveling system. Uh, but then it gets really complex, really fast with elements, and I, I, I just, I, I got so lost in that, in that, uh, in that crap. Uh, another series I really liked but never got into was uh, the Wild Arms series. That's, that's a series that, in theory, I should really like, and I think I actually do like it, but I never just actually got through any of the games and that always feels like a shame to me because it, it's just such a series that if I play it I like it and I, I love everything about it like the presentation the, the slight western theme in it but for some reason I always I never make it to the actual end on those games so that's really one I, I should dive into at some point and, and just uh, uh, get through proper because um, yeah, I think I, I actually do like them, but for some reason I never managed to fitness them. Uh, and uh, yeah, Earthbound. Never never went through Earthbound myself. Um, never got released here either. Uh, at least, you know, not back in the day. So there was one I only learned about very, very late. Uh, and I never bothered with it uh, through emulation or anything like that as well. Um, I did do that with, for example, Chrono Trigger. Play that through emulation, um, but you know that had more hype, I guess. Uh, even though later on, Earthbound got much, much more hyped, I suppose. Uh, especially with uh, uh, you know more of the modern series getting translated. Uh, but yeah, another series I'm very familiar with. Um, so you know, something to look out for uh, in the future too, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I if I I would like those games because they are very much um, like based on the Dragon Quest uh, kind of workings. So I'm not not sure if I'm actually the right um, guy for those. But you know, who knows? Maybe we'll sometimes uh, check it out. Uh, anyway, um, I'm about to um, wrap this one up. Uh, it was really fun to uh, play some games that actually worked this time and didn't have any of the um, multi-loading multi shenanigans. We actually got to play some pretty decent games uh, with pretty 
not so decent gameplay, but you know, that's my fault, not the game's fault. <laughs> uh, and on Wednesday we will try to uh, finish up on the 11th hour. And if you have any suggestions for games to go through after that, um, do let me know, because I do want to focus more on uh, recommendations uh, as, you know, for midweeks where we actually play through some games. But next Sunday we will be playing some more Commodore 64, I think. Maybe something else, but I think whatever it is, it's going to be different games, whatever. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for uh, joining me once again and, uh, you know, just uh, hanging out here uh, on the stream. Always a very much, a, a very, very, very much a pleasure. Uh, Griso's milk is done, so his work is done. He, uh, he decides to uh, go and uh, have a little nap, I'm sure. Anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you will have a, a great rest of the evening. And I look forward to seeing you guys uh, next time. Until then, take care. For now, the muzzle.